Hi everybody, it's Terry at Painting Guard Farm. Uh, just wanted to check in real quick and do my first live video. And I have to move my picture so I'll stop looking at myself on the wrong side. Here we go. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. I kept looking to the left because my picture of me was on the left. Um, so uh, I'm wondering if anybody knows and if you're not, you know, if anybody joins me live, that'd be really cool if you want to uh, chime in. But right now it looks like I'm on my own. That's fine. I did this kind of impromptu. I was going to do it the other day. Um, and uh, my YouTube channel had not been reactivated long enough to be able to go live. So I just made a video and um, I wasn't able to do it the next night. Um, just other things were going on. And so here I am at long last and uh, doing it live. So I wanted to go over a couple of things. Um, I have a lot of seeds and a lot more seeds on the way. <laughs> I've gone a little crazy lately with seeds. Uh, for, oh, don't look at my hair. Uh, that's the rule. Uh, I wanted to say I actually watched some of my old videos I had quarantine here before it was a thing, so I'm a trendsetter. That's what I am. Okay, so anyway, peas, there are three different types of peas, and this is something that was news to me and uh, very recently. Uh, I didn't know that there were, well, I kind of knew, but I, I didn't know there were three types. I knew there were snow peas, the little flat pods that you stir fry. And I knew there were um, the shelling peas that you popped out. You know, you pull the string, you pop them out of the shell, and you eat the little round things. Um, and that you could, uh, I thought that you could always eat the shell too. Well, that turns out not to be 100% accurate. Um, there are three types of peas, actually. And there are the snow peas, as I mentioned, that you you get a pod, um, and I'll show you. I have some of my pea seeds um, that I've saved, and I also, <laughs> here's some more news I didn't know about. Pea seeds, most seeds you can um, keep for several years, and, you know, even though they say they're packaged for year, um, you know, say 2021, um, if you get tomato seeds from a good, reputable um a seed company, you can store those in the fridge or freezer, and they'll. And even if you don't put them in the fridge or freezer, because I've never done, and they've always stored just fine for me. And I've been able to germinate seeds like tomato seeds from tomatobob.com and stuff um, several years later. Uh, so these seeds, I have some burpee seeds. Um, I, I guess with peas, it's just not the same. They don't keep as well. We're going to find out this spring when I plant these in March. Um, so these were burpees peas, and they were called Oregon Sugar Pod 2. And burpee does still sell this seed. Um, so a sugar pod pea is um, a snap pea that the... The pods and the peas are edible and good to eat. Um, so the whole thing is sweet. You can grow the full. You can, you know, you can pick them and eat the whole thing. You can shell them and, um, you know, have them separate. Uh, you can use them as a snow pea. They're basically a cross between the snow peas and the snap peas, the, the garden peas. Um, so they, they will be sweet. Um, the other type of peas, snow peas that you used to see in are uh, actually these, or I'm sorry, I lied. These Oregon two, these are actually a snow pea. So they're a sugar pod, which is a snow pea. This is a snow pea from Baker's Creek. Um, it's corn de Bellier snow peas and these I've had for a couple of years there's about a 
third of a pack left. And I'm going to find out if these kept and how well they do. Because I've had these probably since, I don't know, four years ago. I don't know. I've lost track. Because some these are some of the stuff that I've saved. I know what seeds I got last year that I didn't get to plant much of um, due to the move. But these were ones that I had packed away and was planning to bring with me to the new house. And um, here they are at the new house. And then I found out that peas aren't supposed to really keep. And another distressing thing is these peas here in this baggie. I'm not sure if these are a shell pea or uh, they could be a, sh uh, yeah, a shell pea or they could be a sugar snap pea. I don't know. But we're going to find out if they, because I, I didn't mark them. I think... I'm going to guess that they're sugar snap that because I didn't grow a lot of garden peas. Um, so let's get back. I'm getting ahead of myself. Three types of peas. You have the snow peas. You have the sugar snap peas or the snap peas that you can eat the, um, the pods. And then you have something called the garden pea or English pea. And you don't want to eat the pods on those. You want to put those in the composter. Um, but you do want to, when they're ripe and mature, you want to zip them open and you want to um, just eat the peas. So these are some Baker Creek seeds from probably four or five years ago too. There's only a few left. These are pea um, Calvadon Wonder. And these are early garden pea. So you plant them in March, you'll probably get them before the 4th of July. And um, again, the pods go in the compost. All right. I also have, let's see, these are super snappy. These are a sugar snap, so you can eat the pods and the peas. You let the peas mature, you can eat the pod. This is a snap pea, which... Again, you can eat the pod, you can eat the peas. These are from Baker's Creek, the Magnolia Blossom Tendril. And these are pea that was um, they were developed by Dr. Alan Capular, PhD. They make extra tendrils and they um, and less leaves, so they climb and they have they get more air circulation in the plant, which makes a healthier plant always in any type of plant. Um, so, yeah, they um, are supposed to be really good in salads. You can use it as snow pea or as a shell, uh, shell pea. And these are another sugar snap pea. These I bought last year. Um, I never opened them, and um, the sell-by date was just last, uh, a month ago. So I'm sure these will be fine for the garden. If nothing else grows, I will have peas from that. Lastly, these are butterfly pea. You don't eat them. Well, you can. These don't make peas. These make flowers. Um, it's a double blue butterfly pea. The flowers are for making food coloring, food dyes. Um, I'm sure you can also probably use them for dyeing wool, which I'm hoping because I want to try that. And uh, these make a tea as well. Um, so it's a natural food diet and soothing tea to calm the nerves. I need that. Um, and look at how pretty, I don't know if you can see how pretty that is. A little bit of glare. Oh, look how pretty, that's a beautiful blue. Um, so I'm excited, I'm very excited about these peas. Um, and to see how they look once they grow. And I will, um, be showing you when I start garden tours, once things start to grow, and even before, um, I'll show you how they, how I make out with those. So they're Thai double blue butterfly peas, if you want to order them for yourself from Baker's Creek. Um, I could go through all the millions and millions of other seeds I have. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I'm going to stop talking for a little while. I will be back with you again probably tomorrow, and I will make a, a video 
and I'm going to sort out all my seeds and I will explain to you the um, thrill and excitement of, of each one uh, for me and um, my plans for everything and uh, explain a few other things um, about, you know, I kind of made kind of a mission statement the other day and I don't know if anybody bothered to stop and watch that. If you have a chance to go back and look. Um, again, my plan is to make my backyard into a productive food source for my family and to, um, you know, for me and my husband and the dog. Hi, the dog. She's down there. Um, uh, I also intend to get in shape because the past few years, uh, a lot of stressful things have gone on. I had lost a whole lot of weight and I was in great shape, probably the best shape of my life. I used, I never used to be heavy until I quit smoking. <laughs> so I traded one unhealthy thing for another. And then I lost all the weight back in 2011 and then slowly started to gain it back over the years. And then this past three years have been killer for me. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis about four years ago. That didn't stop me from moving, but it, you know, stress me out and just stress in general um, makes you gain weight anyway because it makes you uh, produce cortisol, which is a hormone that makes you gain weight and a lot of other things. Trying to move, trying to find a house, the frustration of all of that, um, it, it really, it took its toll. And um, I just sort of gave up caring about um Stay in shape and went with the, the cookies. I, I opted for cookies and ice cream. So, and there's nothing wrong with cookies and ice cream if you, for the most part, eat good things, but that wasn't happening. So now I have to get back in shape, and I really want to try to get in shape before I have to start going outside and digging and bending over. You can't bend over when you get the fat belly. So we're going to get rid of that, and... Um, you know, I'm not going to make you watch me work out because yeah, that's not a good thing. I don't want to make anybody nauseous. That's just one way to lose weight. But no. So we're going to get back in shape. We're going to get back out into the garden. We're going to dig in the dirt. We're going to de-stress. Uh, we're going to drink the tea from these beautiful peas so that we calm the nerves and um, get rid of the cortisol. And uh, we'll see what else happens. So I hope you'll join me. I hope you'll, you know, put up with my ramblings. And I hope I can teach you something. Um, and I hope you can teach me some stuff too. Because let me tell you something. I know that I don't know everything. That's one thing I know. And I usually will not open my mouth and say something unless I'm reasonably sure that I know what I'm talking about. Um, but if I'm wrong and somebody can tell me that I'm wrong and uh, I will appreciate it as long as you're polite and I will always try to be polite as well. Um, my channel is not specifically made for kids, but I try to keep it PG and family friendly every once in a while. I might slip and say a bad word and I'll apologize for that, <laughs> for that right now. Um, but, you know, I, I I don't want to be a potty mouth, but I don't want to have to stay squeaky clean all the time. I do want to be educational, and I do want to make some very family-friendly videos because I think everybody needs to learn this stuff, and kids do need to understand and be connected with food. So, um, and you know, if you want to learn it and teach it to your kids because you don't like what I say, <laughs> go ahead do that way. That's fine. So with that, I wish you all a happy Friday. Have a great weekend. I will be back, if not tomorrow, then on Sunday with another video. And we will go over seeds and, um, and why I'm not starting seeds yet. So thanks for watching. Have a good night. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. I need to get this channel built up so that it's, um, so that it's helping everybody, including myself. And it's mostly going to be a record for me, but I'm hoping, again, to give you good content that is educational and helps people out. Thanks. Have a great night. Take care.